The needle, the Helsinki needle. The my needle. Okay, here. Yeah. Okay. Now I will go through. Okay. This is a better needle. The smaller, the better, in fact. Yeah, put some water on the cornea so that we see it very clearly. Okay, to go through and then lift a little bit the posterior capsule. You see that I lift the posterior capsule and then injecting the viscoelastic material in order to separate the anterior hyaluroid from the posterior capsule. And from, for those who are familiar with uh, vitrectomies, you will see that there are some adhesions sometimes between the uh, posterior capsule and between the anterior hyaluroid. And this is an extremely interesting thing. It's to better know the anterior interface. We do know a lot about the posterior interface. That means about the, uh, pos uh, the, the vitreous face. Okay, this is not so good. Can I have my... Okay. What is the size of the posterior capsular excess that we are aiming at? I will I'll have to do a little bit more, uh, redo the opening because this is too... It, it, uh, it, the, it's a very, very thin posterior capsule. She I created mean. a nice flap cut in the, in the p p initial opening and therefore now she will be able to generate a flap again. Yeah. So I have to redo a little bit. That's not a problem. Well, uh, you just what have is the to go back. The rexus aimed at the same size. Well, as the the what rexus. happened is that when she was trying to make a rexus, that that margin didn't form to the right size. So she made a new discontinuity in the original opening, and then went the other way around to now complete and encompass that uh, original openings. Yeah. yeah, that's very yeah. very nice. Very beautifully done. So, but I look at the control she has. Absolutely beautiful. Now, it is also is she important. Using the microcapsular excess forceps there? Yes. Okay. Okay. Very nice. Okay. Okay, I think that will do. Now we are going to prepare the lens itself. Can I? Can you open this one? So essentially, we have two openings which are so equal now in size. Can we show this also? Yeah. That, uh, okay. You take it, but I yeah. want to show that old thing later on. Abhay, that's all. I'm just going to show you the the wrapper here, huh. and okay. this is the Morsher Company's lens. You can, you can show that. I can. Yeah. Uh, this is yeah. This is a Mortra 89 A lens. It's a plus 21 of dioptrical power, and this is the lens. So you can put it here. There is a groove here in the periphery. Can you, can you show here the lens? Here there is also a uh, yeah. Lens and in fact, you see that there is a disc, and you have in fact the haptic surrounding the disc, and then you have of course this groove uh, separating okay. both anterior and posterior haptics, and it is in this groove that I will insert the, ha the, the both anterior and posterior capsule. So okay. this is a central disc optic with a groove all around and two haptics interiorly and two haptics posteriorly, both being separated by the circular okay. groove. And in that groove, she's going to fixate the anterior and posterior capsular, capsular flaps. That's beautiful. Then it's I will like put a little bit of viscoelastic material the behind them before. The capsule is the and then we can fold it, put it in the injector. Okay, and then it's ready to go. Now, in order to inject it, uh, I lift a little bit the incision. Now it may be that the pa I will in enlarge it a little bit because otherwise the patient yes, might uh, feel fe feel the Possibly, the pressure and I cannot explain him. Okay, this will do. Okay, now normally uh, the lens is injected this way, and then once it is injected. 
it will be positioned there where it should be positioned. So that means that I put it, push it a little bit back, I inject on top of it viscoelastic material in order to have it very closely positioned there where it should be. And then I put it a little bit aside, I glide the posterior haptic, yeah, I glide the posterior haptic be, uh, behind the, yeah, I have to be sure that I The horizontal both. ones are posterior haptic, the, the one vertical are the anterior haptics. So the horizontal haptics are behind the anterior capsular opening but in okay. front of the posterior capsular opening. Are, are they? Or are they behind the posterior capsular opening? So, and then I glide yeah, it by the one, the exerting little movements. Like yeah, yes, both by convex. Okay. Yeah. So, and that's it. That's it. I think you could no. see that both the posterior haptics, which are from your right to left, went behind the posterior capsule. That's and right. now yeah. you can align again the Purkinje reflexes. So you see that I here. This is Purkinje reflex four. I think this is one, and a very big one is the three. You can align them, and you see that they are very well aligned. So the patient Wonderful. will have a perfect. Very, 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 very